Hello, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Amanda Ziede with Washington Exec, and today I'm joined by cloud technology experts from industry to discuss navigating a multi-cloud era, cloud security, the federal cloud service market, and more. So before we get started, I'd like to welcome and introduce each of our panelists. First, we have Sandeep Shilawat, who is the Vice President in Cloud and Edge Computing with Mantech. We have Jason Payne, Chief Technology Officer with Microsoft Federal, and John Sankovich, President of the Cloud Business at SMX. Thank you all for joining me today. So I'd like to start by asking if you can each share a bit about your priorities in your current role. Of course, cloud is a major component, but how does cloud play into your broader focus areas? Sandeep, we'll start with you. Thank you, Amanda, for having me here. And I'm in a good company here with Jason and John. At Mantec, we are having something called technology focus areas. I lead a technology focus area with named data at the edge. As it indicates, it's all about having data on the edge, which is more like a mission definition. Four essential technology areas that we deal with is cloud computing, edge computing, 5G, and IoT. Cyber is part of the mix we have. We are part of the Innovation and Capabilities Office at Mantec. Our mandate and charter here is to build capabilities for <clears throat> industry and mission. Uh, some of the capabilities that we have been working on includes multi-cloud management, secure tactical edge platforms, working and bringing 5G related innovation to the industry, and also building zero trust related capabilities in the context of cloud, among other things. We are going to market with various different innovative approaches, mostly not purely from research and development perspective, but how does it meet the mission? At our end, we call it bringing digital to the mission securing the future being our uh, tagline. Sure, thanks Amanda, and, and thanks for having me on the panel today. Um, you know, at Microsoft, our focus is uh, really based around our mission statement, which is to empower every organization and person on the planet to achieve more. And in the federal space, you know, I really think that for us, that means helping our government customers achieve uh, better mission outcomes, and whether that's you know, in the defense and intelligence uh, space or whether that's citizen services in the civilian market, it can take on many forms. But, you know, under that, I would say there's probably three main focus areas where we're really driving. I think the first of which is empowering, you know, new ways of working. Uh, certainly the last couple of years have taught us that um, flexibility is key uh, when it comes to engaging with employees, with engaging with contractors and engaging with citizens. And so new ways of working in the hybrid environment uh, both synchronously and asynchronously, you know, to maintain uh, productivity and collaboration are, are just key and central to a lot of the things that we do here at Microsoft. Secondly, I think you can't enable any of that without it being done securely. And so, you know, we're really focused on delivering trust at scale um, and certainly supporting a lot of the government's initiatives around zero trust and compliance. Those things are inevitably always important within the federal landscape. And we look at cloud technologies as one of the best ways that we can help the government meet those objectives. And I think one of the third and final priority areas that we're really focused on in, in Microsoft Federal is around artificial intelligence. You know, I think it, about the spectrum of cloud capabilities um, and what it enables for our customers today. I look at artificial intelligence as something that is completely achievable. Um, it is something that represents a um, and uh, an, an objective of cloud technology that um, provides impact both to knowledge workers as well as mission outcomes and is representative of a collection of both governance uh, capabilities as well as technical capabilities and a maturity within a federal agency. And so helping customers along their data modernization journeys, deriving insights and value from that data and ultimately arriving at a place where they can apply machine learning and artificial intelligence capabilities to the mission is our third sort of core priority area. Thanks, Amanda. Um, you know, at, at SMX, we're really focused on accelerating our customers' business and mission outcomes, you know, and, and for us, that is a additional focus around security and scale. Uh, we've invested in our capabilities, happy to be recently recognized uh, by Gartner for the sixth consecutive year in their magic quadrant uh, for cloud transformation. And our customers, you know, they're really looking to transform their operations. And we see cloud as the enabler and it helps them achieve their goals 
and within highly secure, compliant, you know, scalable solutions like we offer in FedRAMP, DISA, and state ramp accredited uh, digital platforms. Since first moving some of these initial government workloads to the cloud in 2008, we've evolved from being uh, a real focus around a consulting partner and premier level to the major cloud providers to also offering our own technology platform. And then combining both of these, you know, consulting and technology offerings to customers in security driven and flexible modular options, you know, recognizing that one size is not going to fit all. And, um, you know, as we continue this approach, we're talking less about providing you know, traditional billable resources sitting on site with a customer and really more about being outcome focused. And this is with a flexible kind of modular approach that meets the customer where they're at in their digital life cycle. Well, thank you all for helping us understand a bit more about what you do. All right, so let's dive into cloud. Um, I'm curious as to your perspectives on what the state of cloud service providers is in this multi-cloud area. Help us understand hybrid versus multi-cloud versus distributed versus edge computing. Uh, Sandeep? I think one of the key changes that is occurring in front of us Jason did post on his LinkedIn yesterday about White House came up with a report about how cloud is enabling artificial intelligence. Uh, the locus of control has and is moving from cloud to the edge. And the amount of data that is getting generated at the edge is in zettabytes. Nobody imagined so much data would get generated. And there is a physics that limits how much of the data can really go to cloud. So there is the whole process of cloud computing that uh, we have seen you all over the last decade or more. And then now you see the entire ecosystem around edge computing kind of evolving and developing itself. Now there is entirely new construct coming up called distributed cloud, which is basically having multiple cloud kind of talking to each other. And then, of course, there was always, you know, initially we started with the talk of no uh, on-prem data centers, but we have come to the realization with our customers that they need something to be on-prem as well as something on the cloud, a distributed cloud edge, you know, however, way. that's a hybrid cloud world. So you have, you know, the, there was a survey out there that each of the agencies are having at the minimum five to seven cloud providers in terms of SaaS, PaaS, or infrastructure as a service. Some of them don't even know that they are in cloud, but they are using cloud. So much is the prolification of cloud. So as you can see, there are more, more, more than one cloud. You can call it multi-cloud or poly-cloud. They are on-prem as well, so they are hybrid cloud. There's a lot happening on the edge, so there is an edge computing, and then there is a distributed cloud. So that's the ecosystem that's being developed. There are big three players. Now, uh, you know, Jason represents one of them, right? But there are other two big players in the industry. And between three of them, I think they have more than 90% of the market at the federal level. And they are all, you know, it is hard to pick from how this is how good they are. And what they have done to the industry is they have this enabled a whole new wave of innovation the change that occurs and the pace at which it occurs has actually gone to the level that, you know, some people say it's the biggest innovation since microprocessors. So now you are dealing with an industry in a federal cloud computing level where you are seeing a regulated industry kind of falling behind because of, not because of the technology, because, but because of the lack of adoption of the technology. So, uh, I think the fact that all of these vendors are coming together, enabling and capturing the market. Uh, recently, I was reading a report that uh, the market has grown to more than a trillion dollar. One of the consulting agencies reported uh, that there is a trillion dollar value to capture here. And a lot of it is going to come out of government. So I do think, you know, from the state of uh, cloud service provider perspective, I think a lot of growth is pending on edge computing side. Uh, there is going to be a lot of growth in this connectivity between edge and the cloud. And whether you call it 5G or next G, that's, that's going to be a source of growth. And the piece that we kind of 
just see emerging uh, the whole world is talking about the, the ar vr the metaverse mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of world around iot is going to be some of this fancy looking glasses or tvs and i think that's going to be another significant area of growth you're looking for next five years so the industry is primed for innovation and explosion and all will be enabled by cloud and primed by ai Jason, your perspective yeah i think i would echo a lot of, of sandeep's comments there i think you know if we think about the journey of cloud in the federal space um, multi-cloud has been a reality for a long time now right and certainly from a acquisition perspective as well as from a, a delivery a delivery and a consumption perspective i think government um, agencies look to to consume best of breed capabilities from cloud service providers and you know like there's lots of reports out there about you know cloud um services being deployed at agencies somewhere in the neighborhood of you know dozens of different services you know everywhere from from IaaS to pass and so i think that is a reality that will stay for us stay with us forever I think that the second shift we are seeing is similar to the, the locus of control that, that Sandy mentioned on the edge, you know, whether we're talking about near edge, far edge or, or disconnected, you know, cloud capabilities now are extending globally um, and, and beyond terrestrially. Right. And so we think about orbital technologies and 5G technologies um, and backhauling information that's collected at the edge or needs to be analyzed at the edge. The importance of the ability to make those decisions where uh, missions are actually being conducted is critically important. So we, we actually begin to see sort of the scales balance, if you will, between sort of hyperscale cloud infrastructure as well as edge infrastructure, them being equally important to customer concerns. Uh, the final piece, I think, is from a hybrid perspective. I think this one is evolving, um, but is certainly a reality that is going to stay with us. I think there was the you know, the discussion or maybe the thoughts early on that maybe all government data centers would be shut down. Um, I think that's proven really not to be the case. There are there are conditions and, and certain parameters in which, you know, on premises workloads absolutely make the most sense. Um, and there's other cases where hybrid really extends from pulling together capabilities across best of breed cloud services. And I think the latter is probably where the industry and government together have the most yet to explore. Um, really to provide better mission outcomes. I think, you know, we see multi-cloud as a reality and, and, and hybrid cloud and hybrid architectures across crowd, cloud service providers, not just on-premises infrastructure, being the next frontier of the reality of where we need uh, government services to go. And I think from the perspective of maintaining resiliency, you know, perseverance in, in the fate of, um, you know, whether they're cyber threats or particular nation state threats or, Frankly, even uh, elasticity needs at times, you know, that's sort of the next frontier for cloud service providers. Thank you. And John. Yeah, and I think Jason and uh, Sandeep both bring up great points. And, you know, multi-cloud and hybrid continues to be a focus for customers for a variety of different reasons. You know, many times we see customers select a primary cloud for a majority of their needs and then a secondary or even a third provider to complement this for specific workloads. Yeah, an example is using a provider for data analytics because they may offer a specific service and the data may actually be stored in another cloud provider. We also see continuance of hybrid strategies, uh, whether that's driven by legacy commitments a customer has made uh, in their own data centers, uh, mm -hmm. say a data center where they own their the facility, they own the resources, maybe they've just done a significant tech refresh. And then combining that with edge computing solutions from the cloud providers like Microsoft's Azure Stack or AWS's Outpost service. And they leverage that as an overall approach. You know, and at SMX, we support all these models really as a trusted advisor and really just trying to optimize the environment based on a lot of factors, including what's best for the customer and performance, security, and just maybe overall value. Thank you all. So let's pivot a bit to security. How are we seeing cloud security evolve and what is the importance of zero trust as we discuss cloud security? Sandeep? The amount of breaches that we have faced during COVID and we're still undergoing the continuous attack, cyber attacks with the Ukraine situation, few technical pointers that people might not have noticed. 
is how cloud helped Ukraine to recover its infrastructure. Entire world has noticed how cloud has actually enabled survival. While that happened, cloud has this whole concept of shared security model at an earth scale. And I'm not sure if it is well understood model in a single cloud construct. In a multi-cloud construct, it even becomes more complicated. The concept of zero trust coming in is kind of a natural marriage, if I may, with cloud computing, because cloud is amorphous. It's like they say, earth scale, hyperscale, ubiquitous, whatever word you might want to use. But there is no boundary, there is no perimeter. So as a concept of zero trust, where you are not going to trust anyone as an insider versus outsider, it's it's trust no one but verify. That's the philosophical change zero trust brought in. And then the executive order 14052, and then the cybersecurity executive order and couple others that, you know, there was an OMB memo on EDR, uh, specifically asking uh, agencies to comply with zero trust guidelines. I think that has created a significant forcing function on the market to act. That includes vendors, system integrators, and everyone. And we believe at Mantech, right, that there is no single product or approach that would solve your zero trust needs, especially in the context of cloud. We think zero trust is a journey. It's a culture change. It's a change on how you behave. And then it can be supplemented by products, services, architectures, models, frameworks, if you may. You know, the ecosystem needs an approach and a solution from, from vendors and integrators and service providers and securing that ecosystem is going to be a huge ongoing challenge. It's evident to us by multiple breaches that have occurred over last year and best of the best names have been under attack. And this is not a one-time phenomenon. This is going to continue to happen. And if anything, it's going to get worse. So having a cloud level security in terms of zero trust and having it amorphous and at the place where you're actually are rather than bringing it back all the way to your data center is going to change the way people think and behave. And there are a set of technologies that are needed to solve this problem. The budgets for Zero Trust, if you're following the money on Zero Trust, we think will start appearing in 2023, 24. But there is a lot of TMF related work that actually has already been ongoing because of the OMB memos. We do think that Zero Trust is here to stay, is going to fundamentally change how we think about security and is going to go very naturally with cloud. Thank you. John, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with Sandeep. I mean, we think security and zero trust is really a key value driver for the ongoing driving adoption of cloud technologies. Uh, and this evolution from security being a siloed group to one where security is completely integrated at every level of our solutions and, you know, this concept of DevSecOps. For zero trust, it's never trust, always verify, right? Uh, we need to assume any user, asset, or resource is untrustworthy, must be verified and continually evaluated. Um, because cloud offers every service in a data center as an API, it's really the only solution to provide this level of granular control and audit capabilities to deliver zero trust. And we see this as part of our FedRAMP and DoD compliance audits, where we're reporting on continuous monitoring constantly. The other security focus we pursued as part of being an audited Azure and AWS and Google managed service provider, we've also invested in becoming an accredited and audited managed security provider. And whereas some people may think these are two separate kind of capabilities, we see them as one and fully integrated with this security first focus. Thank you. And Jason, your thoughts? Yeah, thanks, Amanda. So for, you know, when it comes to zero trust, I think we look at that as just completely endemic to securing uh, cloud workloads and really what our customers are, are doing today. You know, I, I'm reminded of early in my career uh, when we saw the the forefront and the, the adoption of agile technology, agile approaches, as well as DevSecOps approaches and sort of the death of waterfall. And I think what we're seeing now is the reality that zero trust um, as a set of principles, um, as a set of objectives and a journey that our customers are on is really repra replacing traditional uh, legacy security approaches. You know, gone are the days of let's build the, 
the moats and walls higher and deeper. Uh, but let's trust nothing and verify everything. And I think that is reflective of the cloud boundaries that we see. Uh, the other thing I think that's important to note is that more broadly than just cloud technologies or zero trust, I think what the last couple of years have really shown us is that modernization is the key to mitigating security concerns and securing uh, government missions and government workloads. You know, too many legacy technologies have vulnerabilities and, and are no longer supported. And when we look at the tools ahead of us for actually modernizing those applications, cloud platforms really provide the best of breed capabilities for modernizing those applications. You know, I look at something like we have here at, at Microsoft across our cloud platform, you know, we're analyzing 24 trillion signals a day. And those 24 trillion signals are analyzed for threat vectors, you know, potential incidents, uh, breaches in customer software, things of that nature. And we're doing so with just incredible cloud scale analytics. And we apply all of those tools and techniques and turn them over for customers to actually use. And so when we combine the best of breed cloud capabilities that it provides from a security tooling, a process and a procedure perspective, and you combine those with the zero trust principles, I really think that combined government agencies really look at those as the best of breed approach and the longevity that we need to really secure government workloads. Thank you, Jason. So I'd like to close uh, by talking about the cloud service market. Where are federal defense and intelligence community agencies investing when it comes to cloud and where should they be investing? And I will switch it up this time. We'll start with John. We've seen a lot of investment uh, recently in migration of, of real mission applications to the cloud where customers are now comfortable with the scale and security of the cloud. And many have made the investment on all the building blocks and foundations for infrastructure data, networking, security, and now they're migrating and modernizing their applications to function with a lot of the native cloud services that are offered versus the proprietary kind of siloed software approach. The great thing we've seen is once a customer's data is in the cloud securely, it really opens up areas like AI, machine learning, and microservices. So then they can gain some real insights from their data. And they can do this at a fraction of the time and investment it may have previously required. An example is an agency we work with using AI and cloud enabled data analytics for their human resources, really helping to understand and predict why employees are su successful uh, in their career development and to increase retention. Another area we're starting to see is uh, investment in legacy platforms and migrations of areas like mainframes where there's really limited ability to support the legacy code platforms like COBOL because there just aren't enough people that still have this background. And once they've done this, there's such a significant improvement in functionality and service level agreements, cost, quality, security, once these platforms are modernized uh, in cloud enabled solutions. We are seeing three different trends. FedServe, we're seeing a very commercial-like trend. Uh, we're seeing a lot of adoption of cloud. On DoD and IC side, in last uh, two, three years, we have seen a full-scale commitment to cloud technologies. I think, I think that's a broad segregation, if I may. Uh, we see uh, all the three players strongly coming into all the three areas that I just mentioned. The investment we are seeing is significantly higher now than it ever was. If you look at statistically, only 20% of production workloads are in cloud today. So there is a lot of business that would occur in coming years for cloud migrations. The other area that is emerging that we believe is going to be a big problem area because it's a lot of surveys are out there showing visibility as being the biggest problem in multi-cloud era is a management of multi-clouds. We believe that's going to be the biggest uh, complexity uh, that is emerging and the industry would have to deal with. There are point solutions available, but we do not think that there is a, a comprehensive multi-cloud management solution available across the industry, especially from operations side. I think getting there is the art. Folks are figuring it out. But when you get there, how do you behave is another area. We also think that industry is not primed for 
the amount of workload that needs to go to cloud and the pace at which they go. You know, we are always presented with options of modernization and then migration or migration and then modernization, carrying the technical depth around. Uh, we do think that's a significant area. So we need a, a increase in velocity of migration, which is what we try to provide to the customer through our one glass platform. We also think there is a locus of control that we discussed that has moved from cloud to the edge. So there needs to be a lot of investment. And you would see uh, our customers, DOD and IC and Pet Suicide are investing in network management, right? And improving the network capacity. And a lot of that capacity comes built in when you are dealing with hyperscaler cloud providers. So we do believe that there is going to be a lot of industry change occurring. And the last trend that I think is evident to everyone and is being discussed very heavily, evident through the legislation and executive orders, is cloud security. We do believe that because of President's executive order, this is the one of the rare times in the last 20 years that federal market is moving ahead of the commercial market because of the mandates given by President. So we do think Multi-cloud security is another area that will have a significant investment in the next three to five years. All right, makes sense. Thank you. And Jason. Yeah, I think I would echo a lot of the same comments from, from John and Sandy here. You know, particularly on the technology side, we see an incredible amount of focus um, and investment right now in security. Um, you know, anything to do with uh, software factories and, and DevSecOps pipelines, right? The delivery of digital capability more rapidly and certainly anything to support the modernization of data estates to get better insights, analytics, or potentially even machine learning or, or AI outcomes out of data sets. You know, I think above and beyond the technology, though, I, I might harken back to something Sandeep just said about the adoption. You know, if I were to really think about where defense and intelligence customers might need to invest more, would really be around in, in people and process to drive a lot of that adoption. You know, if I think about the broad ecosystem of you know, the pacing threats that we have and keeping up um, and maintaining our, our information dominance, um, getting to cloud and getting to these outcomes faster is probably the single biggest and most impactful thing that we could do. The technology improves at just an incredible pace and it changes at an incredible pace. And I think having people with the capability to keep pace with the technology and the flexibility to do so will provide more actual for government at the end of the day, right? So today we're talking about software pipelines, tomorrow it's AI and the day after it's quantum, right? It's an incredible spectrum of technology change that's coming and the pace is only getting faster. And so investing in the people, investing in the capabilities they have and investing in their success, I think will drive the best mission outcomes for defense and intelligence customers. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for your perspective on all these cloud topics. We've been Talking about cloud for years, obviously it's a leading component of federal IT modernization. And, and Jason, as you mentioned, as technology evolves and advances, it becomes increasingly more important to continue having these types of conversations. So appreciate your thoughts and perspectives and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you.